Hello everybody, uh, this is, actually I have no idea what step this is, <laughs> I think it's like step 6 or 7, uh, but anyway we're skinning our rig, so um, normally I like to skin before I add IKs and all this other stuff, uh, really that's just because that way I have full control over my joints and I can test them, and it really doesn't matter uh, if you add IKs and all your controls later, because you know it's going to be crunching the data the same way. It doesn't really matter. I mean, so long as you, <clears throat> so long as you uh, get your rigging down and you know the process and you don't mess up with like double transformations and stuff like that, then you'll be fine. Uh, if you do get that, then you're joint will go all crazy and chances are your mesh will too and you may end up locking up Maya but then chances are you'll figure out what uh, what you did wrong and you'll be able to redo it but anyway uh, so for this tutorial I'm gonna go over a couple things that we didn't really discuss in class um, one of which is going to be interactive um, interactive uh, waiting which will help you boost your uh, your skinning process, your weighting process, and then we'll go over actual just painting the weights. In which case, I recommend using a tablet. It just kind of makes things a little bit easier, a little bit faster, especially if you're used to a tablet. Um, then I'll go over uh, manually shifting the weights on vertices as well, so you can fine tune your uh, your weights. So anyway, with that being said, what you want to do is you want to select your entire skeleton, so select your root joint, shift select your skin or your mesh, and you want to go to bind skin or skin, bind skin, and then smooth skin bind. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can go to smooth skin bind, and We're just going to go to bind joint hierarchy. The uh, bind method, you have a couple different choices. Um, closest in hierarchy or closest distance, things like that. Um, we can just leave it to uh, the defaults here. The uh, skinning method for most of this, you can go classic linear. Um, dual quaternion is a little bit different. You can check your Maya help files if you want information about that, but basically uh, from my understanding it's essentially you have two different meshes and what it's going to do is you bind one one way, you bind one another way, and it does it normalizes the weights on both of those meshes. It's kind of confusing, but that was my best understanding of that. I've never actually used it. And then there's uh, weight blended and that essentially takes if, say for this, for instance right here, you have this bone and this bone controlling this vertice. What it does is it blends between the two constantly. And uh, the issue with that is, I don't know, I, I just am not the biggest fan. I, I just go with the classic linear. It's what it, I'm used to. It gives the most control. Um, the one thing you do want to check is uh, normalize weights. You can go interactive or post or none at all. Um, I'm going to go interactive with this one. And then your max influences, I'll re reduce that down, uh, but I'm not going to maintain my uh, max distances. So I want to have a, uh, I want to have a max, but I don't necessarily want that to be my full on max. And then colorized skeleton just really just helps you uh, see your joints and everything else a lot better than uh, than just the black and white, things like that. Uh, let's see, move unused influences. Um, yeah. And then you just hit bind skin. There you go. So now you can check it, see what it did. You can see how messed up it is because Maya is not perfect. We have to 
give it a little extra help. So um, normally you would want to have this rig fully done. Um, you would want, if you're going to have IK like this, you would want an FK situation going on in there. So that way you can uh, you can control it manually and test it. But we're just going to have to force our rig for right now because I didn't add an FK and I will later. But right now I'm just going through this process the way that we do, uh, the way we're doing it in class. So um, you can see the legs aren't too bad by default. Um, although my pull vector can be a little bit further apart just so that they don't collide like that. There we go. So, uh, yeah. So you're seeing, you know, you got a little pulling right here. The waist is bending, so chances are we've got the root control controlling vertices up here. Um, so we have issues. We've got this guy going crazy. I'm not quite sure what he's doing. Um, our back looks... Uh, it's got some pinching right here. That's not good. Our knees aren't exactly deforming properly. They kind of look like they're just made out of rubber. So from here, we want to zero this back out. We'll leave the pull vectors for the knees where they are. They're fine. Um, one thing you do want to make sure though before you start rigging and when you have your uh, character completed is your topology is really going to help you out in the skinning process. It's going to help you out determining how the, the, the skin is bending and deforming and twisting. Um, things like that. Yeah, we're getting... I think our knees are controlling the midsection there. That's why we're getting that pulling. So that's definitely not something that we want. So yeah, we have some issues we're going to fix. So Next what you want to do is you want to start painting these weights. You can do it a couple different ways. Um, you can go to skin, um, edit, smooth skin, and then you have your influences here. Now one thing that I do want to do is go through these and say like this guy who's on the outside, he's controlling the top of the head. I don't necessarily want that. I want this joint to control the head. So when I rotate this joint, it controls the head not this little tiny joint up here. It makes no sense. Um, so what you can do is go to blah, 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 skin, edit skin, and then just remove influence, which should have worked. Why didn't it work? Let's check that out. Um, skin cluster mel. Let's transformer. Let's select the skin. Oh, because I forgot to select the skin. Sorry. So there you go. Bam. And then edit smooth skin, remove influence. And what that does is it just makes sure that, you know, now I can rotate my head and it is fine. And these end joints, which really should not be attached to anything anyway, don't control anything. It is controlling, like if I move it, it controls the head only because of the fact that uh, it's attached to this bone. And it, therefore it's moving that bone, but if I rotate it doesn't do anything. So that's exactly what we want. Um, same thing with like this guy here. We can uh, do the same thing. And we'll just do that to all of our joints. And I'll pause the video so I, you guys don't have to sit here and watch me fumble around and do this. Um, I do apologize. I am suffering from um, pretty big, pretty bad neck pain. And uh, so I'm kind of out of it right now but I'm going to do my best to put together these videos for you guys. Um, so yeah, just go through all of your toes, your, your fingers, these guys, and just do the same thing. Um, they, there's just no need for these guys to be controlling anything. And it's really just extra crunching that Maya has to figure out. Plus, it's really going to help your, your painting situation because uh, that way these little end joints don't end up 
controlling something that you weren't expecting them to be controlling, things like that. It's just an extra way to clean house. So go through and take care of all these. I'm going to pause the video and take care of my feet and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that everything is done, and uh, just real quick for the feet, I just want to make sure that you guys know that you're using the joint, not the inverse foot. So um, there's a difference there. Just use the, the toe joint, so it should be left toe joint, um, instead of the inverse toe. You don't want to... Um, it sh the inverse toe shouldn't be bound to anything anyway, but it will trip you up if you don't get it right. Um, okay, so anyway... Now what we want to do is we want to adjust the actual skin. Um, select your skin, go to edit smooth skin, and you have a, get a couple different options here. Um, you can export your skin weights as a map, and that creates essentially, it's just a uh, black and white image map. It's kind of cool. You can do, uh, like if you get a Photoshop, you can do that. It's, I don't know, I've never actually really used it. Um, I just like painting directly on my mesh or uh, using the interactive weights tool. Now um, I will go over this paint weights tool. Norm uh, most artists that's all they use but now that Maya has created this interactive skin bind tool thing um, so much better I think. But yeah it's just you know how you how you like to skin really um, how, how you like to set up your joints things like that um, so I'll go over this first and then I will go over how to uh, paint your weights the traditional way so um, for this you have to actually um, bind it with the interactive uh, bind so it's a little bit different um, so for right now, we will detach skin, and I do want to make sure that everything is reset. Oops, see, Not that way. These guys. Okay, just make sure everything's back to normal. We got a little ball rotation in here we can zero out. There we go. So now everything fits in. Okay, so same thing, select your skeleton, select your uh, skin here. And you wanna go to smooth skin, oops. And then interactive uh, skin bind. And it's gonna bring up pretty much the same window. And uh, it's gonna be more or less the same thing closest, blah blah blah. I like to use capsules for my volume type and I'll show you what those are in a moment. And then uh, classic linear and then get rid of your maintain max influences. So there you go. And um, just hit bind skin and now we have a capsule. And you'll notice what this does. Um, within that capsule is determining how much influence we have so this is our root joint, or in my in, in my case, it's my waist, my hip joint, um, the sacrum essentially, and then you have the hips, and then blah blah blah. Okay, so skinning is fairly straightforward. Um, you're gonna look at the joint and figure out what you want that joint to influence. So in this case, this root joint, we really want it to influence more or less where the uh, like if, if he was wearing a pair of uh, briefs, um, where those would lie. And then the, the hip joint is controlling the leg and the hip. And, you know, knee is controlling this area right here, blah, blah, blah. Um, later, I hope to get done a more anatomically correct uh, rig for, say, film. Um, this is more of like a hybrid. Um, good for film, good for games. It doesn't have a whole lot of... Uh, Joints. It, it probably has more joints in the neck that you really than you really need in a game rig, um, but 
yeah, it has you know a few joints and stuff like that. Um, a lot of this stuff you would probably want to hard code just because it's a little bit faster and for games that would be best. Uh, so you you just manipulate the capsule exactly the way um, you would manipulate geometry and stuff. You have your rotation, you have your translation, all in one control, which I think is amazing. It's what Houdini does. They have kind of like this massive, awesome uh, controller, all in one unit. Um, you can grab these little blue guys, and it scales out in um, X only, and so you can make it kind of like this weird oblong shape, which is kind of what we're gonna want. You can scale down like the top with just the other blue set. These green sets allow you to push in and out your uh, influence. Um, the round ring is a scale. Like so, I'll move this down. Oops. So, something like this. I don't care too much about his junk. Um, I'll fix that later with like a just manually painting. Um, same thing with the, the butt. I'll uh, adjust those and really fine tune them later. So we're not really. This is more or less just blocking in stuff. We're not gonna freak out too much about it being perfect. So right about there, um, we want to kind of blur our. Uh, Influence. Oops. Yeah. Okay. And then we can adjust our fall off here. Um, so if I did like a linear fall off, you'll see the differences, or at least you should. And it's not changing it now. That's amazing. But I like to go with this nice S curve. It really depends on the joints that I'm working with here. But, uh, yeah. You know, you have different settings in here. You can display all of your capsules and make sure that they're all right. I mean, obviously, this arm is massive and it's enc encapsulating the uh, elbow. So that's not cool. Um, it's taken over a lot of the chest, the chest is just convoluted and crazy and you know the head's got like two joint, uh, two capsules in here and chances are one of them is the jaw that's all messed up. So you can see that there's a lot of working that needs to be done. Um, fingers are pretty much right on. There's not a whole lot of tweaking that be need needing to be done with them. Um, but really it's just a nice way to uh, set up everything. Um, Just there we go. So yeah, so we're just gonna go in here and really fine tweak these things. Bring this in a little bit closer, so it kind of uh, starts encapsulating the butt. We can do the same thing with this guy. Maybe pull him out. Not really sure. There we go. It's good enough for now. Um, we can always come back and tweak them further and and double check them things like that so I'm not too worried um, and then down here your color presets you can just adjust it's a uh, pretty self-explanatory this is more like a flame concept uh, you got the colors the black and white which is more traditional of the um, manual paint weights so if you're custom if you're used to that then cool um, I just go with the default rainbow it's just what I'm used to uh, yeah, so that's pretty much most of this, and then you just go down one joint at a time. You can, uh, usually select them here, but, there we go, there we go. Um, so you can select them here, or you can select them in the viewport, it really doesn't matter. If you do select out, you're gonna have to select them in the viewport again anyway. So, um... This part's fairly self-explanatory, so I'm really not gonna go through these with you 
step by step. Um, I'm going to take for granted that you can do these by yourself. What I will do is once I get them done, I'll uh, go through them and show you what they look like. So you can kind of just use that and match it up, I guess, if you really wanted to copy exactly what I'm doing. But personally, I think you should just try it on your own and see what you can come up with. That's the best way to learn. And I mean, really, if you're just copying word for word what people are saying, you are learning stuff. But you're, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, almost cheating in a way. So uh, really just try to do as much as you can on your own and then, you know, double check your work. Um, with this method here, one, um, before we get into the actual painting of weights and stuff uh, by hand, um, this method of s smooth binding, if you just keep going through this step, going one bone at a time, things like that, and adjusting these capsules, uh, it's you really can't mess up. I mean, at that point, if you really want to double check the work and match it to mine, it's a lot easier just to double check it and match it later. So um, try to do this without me. I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back. Hey guys, uh, I just want to point out um, one thing you will get in here, and I don't and you shouldn't worry about it, is this right here. Um, what's going on is, you know, his, you just got a major enhancement. <laughs> um, what's going on is these vertices that are uh, down here, they don't have any influences. And that's just a matter of adjusting these capsules as you go up and down and stuff like that. Plus, later on, um, if they're still like this, when you're done adjusting your capsules and you feel comfortable with them, uh, when we paint weights, uh, they will uh, will be able to fix these. So it, don't worry about them. It happens. It's just a, a artifact thing of moving these things around, and it, it will get fixed. Um, so it's not that big of a deal. Right now, uh, just keep on going through. Um, also, if you happen to completely like get rid of your uh, tool, I created a shelf button. It's you know easy, control shift, blah blah blah, just go down here into your interactive skin bind tool and then just create a shelf. And you can bring it back. So for instance, it's gone and now I can just bring it back like so. So um really there's no need to worry about this process. It's pretty straightforward. Just go through and uh do what you can as far as coming up with these uh weights here. Um, and uh, I'll be back in just a little bit. Hey everybody. Um, so I already did this, but <clears throat> I'm redoing it because I didn't like the outcome of the last video. So um, anyway, once you've got your interactive uh, skin bind thing going on, uh, if you've get if you've got that artifact thing where the points are collecting down here, it's really because your capsules are not set up properly. Um, I know I said otherwise. You can fix them later, but it, it's just easier just to take care of the problem in the interactive skin bind thing, and then paint back your weights later. Um, so, with that being said, I'll show you what I have. Uh, Oops. Do that again. So you can see my hips. Um, they'll get adjusted a little bit later. Um, let's go ahead and turn this into black and white. There we go. So that way you can. Uh, see what it's going to look like with the interactive paint uh, with the paint weights brush thing going on too. Um, so white is 100% influence, black is 0% influence. Um, so yeah. Then you go with say The next joint goes all the way around. 
this joint that's all the way through. I've got some issues here with uh, the clavicle being controlled by this guy. Um, the uh, this joint being controlling part of the arm, but again, we're gonna take care of that manually anyway. This is really just for blocking in your weights, so you don't have to. Because normally what happens is when you do paint weights, um, you'll get you'll run into issues with like the arm being over here, but for some reason it's controlling part of the leg. Uh, it happens sometimes this just helps get rid of a lot of that so you know as you can see we just went through and took care of a lot of the joints here you know, set up the hand more or less um, set these guys anyway I'm not gonna go through all of them you can use your better judgment on most of these it's pretty self-explanatory if the joint is by that area that you want to influence then you paint in that area um, there's not really much else to say about it. Uh, you will, of course, have other influences. So, for instance, in the face here, I want this joint to control the head. And you can see it's also controlling this guy down here, which we don't want. But uh, it's controlling part of the head and stuff, right? Which is great. Um, However, when we do facial rigging, we're also going to have things controlling part of the head. So like this jaw, um, I have to fine tune these joint, uh, these weights, but uh, that's what the max influence thing takes care of because it's going to say that, yes, this joint is influencing these vertices, but I will also have other things influencing these vertices, like controls for the lips to smile, things like that, blend shapes, um, other things like that to uh, control. Like maybe we want to actually use clusters to um, be able to ha give the animator the ultimate control over um, the face, things like that. Um, eyebrow clusters to bring them in, move them, mold the face. Uh, it's so really for for bones you're really just setting up the main things um, one thing I do want to suggest is like I said doing your your um, binding before you set up a lot of your rig so set your skeleton set its limits and then bind do not like it's just a pain a royal pain actually to set these guys up and have to work with IKs it's like you can move your arm and everything but you can't really it's just such a pain to like do this and I don't know it's really it's best to bind before you set up your rig and I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh man, well why, why bother even rigging and blah 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 and all this other crap. But you know, it is what it is. Um, you just kind of have to take it and go. Uh, for now, there is a way that you can get around this. And it is by going to your control, going to your hierarchy. And let's see if we can do this here. So we'll go to our control, we'll open up its hierarchy here, and it's controlling a lot of these guys here. Um, but what we're going to do is take our point, throw its weight down to zero, um, uh, let's see, one thing you can also do actually let me see if this works I'm gonna see if this works because hopefully I can add just the skeleton I've never actually tried this so I'm experimenting um, but add just the skeleton and the bones to another layer shoot and I can't 
Yes, I can. Ha ha. Okay, so with this layer selected, can I? No. Blast. So anyway, what I was hoping was I could add just the joints and just the uh, just the skin and be able to manipulate them without having to do this. I, I'm going to take a quick break, pause the video, and try to figure out how I can get rid of my controls without messing up all the work that I've done so that I have full control over my um, joints. So I'll be right back. Um, chances are it's going to be going in and resetting all of the uh, resetting all of the weights for the constraints and all of that to zero. Um, but I'm going to see if I can come up with a quick solution uh, and we will uh, do that in a little bit. Okay, uh, sorry about that everybody. Um, took me a little while to figure out all of like what five, ten, I don't know, ten minutes. I had to go get some coffee because it's six o'clock in the morning and I've been up all night. Not doing this mind you, but uh, mostly coding. <laughs> um, for some reason lately I can't get away from the code. Uh, it's an addiction. Anyway, uh, so as you can see I now have full control over my IKs, or uh, over my joints, I'm sorry. Um, I can bend them. There is still a little bit of a weird issue going on with uh, my my hands and because they are still being affected by uh, expressions no I'm sorry uh, by connections and I don't know that I can actually get rid of that um, it's kind of the name of the beast you know you just you can only do so much what I could do is break these connections temporarily uh, Oh wait, no, that's a constraint, isn't it? Controlling that. Because it's... X is back here. That is a connection. This is a constraint. But why is my constraint? I'm sorry, I'm thinking out loud. So anyway, what you want is uh, to get rid of your IK's influence and your control's influence and such. Um, I really just turned off my controls by hitting NURBS curve up here. That really that got rid of that. And then locators to get rid of the hip center locator if you don't have that hidden already. Um, but really you want to go up to modify, evaluate nodes, and you want to get rid of your expressions if you have any. If you don't, then, you know, whatever. Um, and constraints. And I'm going to throw off dynamic constraints, but for some reason these guys are still being controlled. I find that fascinating. Huh. So yeah, that's another way of taking care of that issue as well. Just zero out the weight influence of the control down here. For some reason, it's still evaluating, even though my constraints evaluation is off, for some reason Maya was still evaluating the constraint, um, which I have no idea why that would be. It boggles my mind. But anyway, uh, if you want to get rid of that and you want to be able to have full control over your wrist and all of that, just you know, throw its weights down. Um, just remember that you're going to have to uh, raise those weights up later. So as you can see, I've got some weird ear issue going on with, uh, with uh, my clavicle here, my shoulder. Um, so, you know, tweaking. But at this point, um, I've got all my capsules more or less set up. Um, I could go through one by one with you, but really, this is what they look like here. Bam. So, let's turn off my joints. So this is what my, oops, this is what my capsules look like. I've got the mid one here, here's the chest, the uh, clavicle joint is this one that comes out way across here, goes straight through the chest, um, yeah, looks a little confusing, there's a neck one right here, you can see the colors, the jaw starts here, goes out, the head goes up and around, this little guy right here doesn't actually do anything, so we're not worrying about it, 
um, shoulder, arm, forearm, the hand, thumb. These are all fairly self-explanatory. You just, you know, you just go through and I don't know. Do I really want to go through all of these? I just set up my clavicle. Set up my um, sh uh, shoulder, elbow, forearm, wrist, index fingers. The fingers are all more or less the same. This joint doesn't have any influence at all. Um, we removed its influence, if you remember that. So you just go through and just, you know, set them up. Uh, You have your leg, your uh, shin, I guess you would call it, goes down to the heel, this guy, um, and then the, the toes. So really, it's just to block in your paint, your, your weights. It's a really quick and easy way to just block it in. Oftentimes, you can get pretty good results. I can't with this guy just because his thighs are so close together that the capsules are almost null and void. Um, in this section anyway. So I'm gonna have to go in and, and move its leg move his leg, paint some weights, things like that. So let's do that right now. Um, let's go in here, select your skin, and you can click this button right here, which is your paint weights, or you can go up to skin, edit smooth skin, uh paint weights tool. Okay, um I'm just gonna go ahead and use this guy right here. So it's pretty much if you notice, it looks almost exactly like the uh, interactive weights tool, which it kind of is. Um, but you're seeing different values here. So you have, I, I like using replace, and then I set my value. This is the weight value of the vertices. So one is being full on and zero is off. Yeah, you know, so you can just kind of do this. Um, you have select mode where you can, and I have no idea why it's not painting here. Paint mode. Come on. Let's try this again. Why won't you let me paint, bastard? Root. Okay, there we go. So you gotta select a joint. I knew that. I'm just really tired. Anyway, <laughs> I hate messing up on small things, and I'm not even gonna bother editing that out. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so select your joint, paint your weights. Um, yeah, I don't know how much there is to explain here. Um, I'm just going to find a leg first. Fingers, clavicle. Tell me way the fuck in here. There it is. So um, you can see there's some issues going on with my leg. Uh, if I um, well, let's just go over uh, this tool here, the paint weights tool. Um, once you get a joint down, you can actually lock him. Uh, you can unlock your influences, things like that. Um, here you can do the, the paint selected. So you're selecting vertices as you're painting. Um, you can select vertices, you can paint them. Um, with the paint selected, you're only, I mean, with the paint and having vertices selected like that, you're only painting the vertices that are selected, so that's kind of cool. Um, here. Arg. Do, do, do. Oops. Okay, so we already have our joint selected. Just going to hell down here. Okay, so, um, anyway. So it's pretty self-explanatory. This is really helps with the tablet. I'm using a mouse right now. Um, tablets are kind of nice. You, it's just a little more intuitive, I think, 
for people who already use tablets. Um, this is where your topology is really going to be your friend because you can see the edge flow, which is huge. Um, let's see. So replace replaces whatever the influence is for that joint. So if I have this on full and I select this vertice, it replaces that value on full. Um, if I set it to zero, bam, zero. So it's pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, add adds whatever you have. So um, if I set this to like 50 and I hit add, if I keep going across it, it's going to keep adding 50% of this value, whatever value is there. So pretty self-explanatory. Um, scale is, I, I've never really had any use for using scale, but you know, you can look it up and figure out what it is. Uh, smooth is a nice thing to do uh, when you get like a hard, you have like a hard edge right here and down here by the knee. You just hit flood and uh, it smooths everything out, just kind of makes it a little more of a gradual shift between the two joints. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. You can use a color ramp instead of a um, black and white. I like the colored ramp just because you can clearly tell what this is doing. You can clearly tell that, you know, what's going on here. It makes it a little easier. The blue is, you know, no influence whatsoever. Um, actually, the well, it's not necessarily true. The blue means that this joint is not influencing uh, the, these vertices. However, they are being influenced by another vertice. So, um, yeah, it's you know you can just go back and forth and figure it out. <laughs> uh, stroke. It's kind of the same as in like you know any kind of brush tool here, the sculpt, the, the sculpt geometry tool, it's all the same. Um, stylus pressure, if I had a tablet plugged in, which I don't, then you know you can play with those settings. Uh, yeah, these are all pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I'm not going to go over all of these, they're just, you can look it up, um, see what they do. I, I just video is already going too long so I'm gonna go in and go through paint my weights do the profile I think I've already I feel like I've already explained this before so I'm sorry if I don't cover something but you know he's you know drop a comment on Yahoo on uh, YouTube or whatever and I'll try to cover it in the next video or um, something like that but yeah this just really just go in and uh, joint by joint, painting your weights, uh, wow, and Camtasia decides to pop up for some reason, that's awesome, because I'm hitting windows, um, anyway, so I do replace, full on, just go in here and paint your weights the way that you feel they should be painted, um, then what you do is, say for like the hip joint for instance, you can go in here, select the joint, and pivot it like this and you can see that these guys are being affected by that weights uh, by that joints weight so you go in here with the you gotta select your skin paint weights and then you go in here with the uh, with zero with the replace and uh, paint back these joints. I'm probably going to end up plugging in a tablet because this is driving me freaking crazy with this mouse. But anyway, you just go in here and uh, paint these weights back and you'll see them pop back like so. And really this is what I, I, I start off with. I, I really start off with um, just really roughing in these weights like crazy. Um, just fixing a lot of these issues that came across with the uh, interactive weights tool. Um, these are the same issues actually uh, that you'll get if you just start with this method. Um, the, the weights are never fully accurate. 
So, uh, I mean, Maya doesn't, can't do everything all at once, like, you know, perfectly the first time. You have to really just tell it what you want it to do. Um, it's not Maya's fault. It's really just, I mean, too many calculations and stuff to figure out. But anyway, I'm going to go in and probably stop this video because I'm rambling right now because I'm so tired. <sighs> and the coffee's only now kicking in. But I'm going to go in and move these joints around, paint weights. Uh, what you want to do is once you get to a certain point where your weights are starting to look good um, and they're not really affecting anything down here that they're not supposed to be affecting, then you start moving your joint around and seeing how the skin bends and start painting in weights and painting out weights. Uh, to make your your skin bend the way it should so like here there's going to be some folding here but not necessarily down here and the, you have to remember your um you have to remember your uh anatomy that there's a hip bone right there so um this kind of movement is very awkward so uh yeah so i'm gonna put that back down so anyway, um, one thing you also want to remember too is right now my joint has rotations and it shouldn't. That's fascinating. Should only have translations. That means I messed up somehow. But um, I know why I messed up. And that has to do with uh, the location of my uh, let's see okay a couple things it's the location of my pull vectors and the uh, let's see no there's no rotation there Huh, that's odd. So, rotations in your joints, not good, not good at all, actually. Um, this is going to tweak my joint, which I don't necessarily want, but, you know, it's just the name of the game. I messed them up, and now I have to fix them. So, um, quick fix, if you want to know, uh, if you have rotations in your joints and you need to fix them like this, you're fixing the joint's orientation, um, like so. So, i move this back a little bit more. That's fine. This probably could be moved in. So just go through and make some final, make some little tweaks, something like that. That looks pretty good. So, uh, yeah, just um, it probably happened when I was rigging. I just I accidentally moved them or something. You know, Maya always has these weird little things where you can easily just accidentally do something and mess everything up. So. Uh, yeah, just go in and fix your joints orientations. Be mindful of where your joints should be. So, um, luckily for the, the leg here, I have my uh, inverse foot that I can really just gauge this off of. But ideally, you should not have any rotations. So I have rotations here, for instance. So I'm gonna go back through and fix those orientations. Um, this sort of house cleaning is really good. You should always double check 
before uh, before you really start getting in heavily into uh, finishing your rig and stuff. Um, plus, not having rotate not having rotation values is going to help us out in the skinning process too. Because you know when we move our joint uh, like so, we can just zero them out, and we don't have to know the value that we had prior. Uh, things like that. Um, he got tilted here. Oh, that one did too. Look at that. So just go through, make some tweaks. Um, my feet are naturally a little bit off the floor. That I already knew. I already know. However, he is up. Probably going to my side view for this. So, um, you know, these things happen when you're rigging. Just little minor tweaks. They shouldn't happen, but, you know, they do. So, we forgive Maya <laughs> for blaming Maya for our weaknesses as riggers. but these things certainly do happen. Just go through and fix them. It's not that big of a deal. Just, uh, you know, I think the big thing is knowing how to fix them. And, uh, you know, Um, just in case anybody doesn't know, I am scrubbing by holding down control and clicking the value on my channel box. Um, like so. So this guy is going to give me trouble. It's going to be a little punk. So, almost there. Not sure why he's being such a jerk. Just make little tweaks till you get it right. I'll move him over. Move him down a little bit. There we go. Something like that. It's good enough. Good enough for me. So uh, I'm going to go through and just double check on my joints because there shouldn't be rotations, but there may be. Um, I've got some orient thing going on here with my constraints that I could just turn off uh, when I need to adjust those. I've got a rotation here because I was tweaking, um, moved it. That's no big deal. Just move it again. Oops. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm just going to go through and double check all these guys. Um, Oopsie. Whoa. Not really sure what happened there. Okay. So, um, there should not be any rotations in these guys whatsoever. And Maya is still freaking out. Good. Good. And these are all golden. So if everything's done right, then there is no rotations. Um, and you may not have any rotation values in your uh, in your joints, and that's sweet if that's the case. Um, just move on with painting weights. Um, but not having these rotation values is really going to save your life, because uh, you can just zero out the channels when you're done, and it goes back to the bind pose. Um,
by. I mean, if you didn't have, if you had zeros in here, um, you could clearly go into. Bonk. You could clearly go into uh, ch -ch -ch skin and then go to bind pose, and it'll snap it back into whatever T pose that you had when you uh, first bound your character. So there's that. Um, I'm pretty sure that none of these guys are going to have values. If they are, I'm just going to set them later. Um, double check my neck and my head real quick. Uh, yeah, I'm confident in that. Okay, so now... Uh, now I can double check my weights here. Um, just remember bones and your anatomy and stuff like that. Uh, this guy, I'm going to have to fix his junk and his leg. So just go in and do the best you can. Um, painting your weights, there's not a whole lot to say about this. Um, I'll probably uh, show a little bit of what my weights look like after I've fully painted them. Uh, but really, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just go in, paint your weights, check the uh, movements of each joint. Now that you have the uh, the IKs taken off, you'll have full control over your joints. Um, if you don't, chances are it's got some constraint issue going on. And I again, I have no idea why. If constraints is off on the evaluation. Uh, Maya should not be evaluating them, but for some reason it still was, so go figure that out. Um, but anyway, just go in here and paint your weights. I'm going to plug my tablet in for this, and uh, well, I'm going to pause the video and uh, plug my tablet in for this because it's a lot easier just going in here and painting these things without this mouse issue here. Um, it's a lot easier with a tablet. To be honest, I feel some people may argue, but you know, it's a difference of opinion. That's all it is. So anyway, that being said, just uh, you know, throw on some great music. Uh, I'm gonna be listening to some Skrillex or something. Maybe some drum and bass. Get my energy levels going on. Uh, but yeah, you know, I just set up my values. You can hold down B, change your breast size. Put these guys on. Um, in the middle of the bone, I usually go full on, and I check it, and I can always paint it back, whatever. But uh, yeah, this is this takes a long time, guys. Um, I gotta be honest, it uh, it does take time, and if you procrastinate on, on it, or you uh, half-ass it, it's, it's gonna show. Um, you, uh, it definitely does show in this point. Um, you can fake a lot of things in Maya. You can cheat, a, you can take a lot of, cut a lot of corners, cheat a lot of things. Um, really making a good you know, skinning, skinning processes is, is and doing this really well. Is uh, is not one area you can cut corners on. Um, there's ways that you can get a decent skin fast, but um, it's not going to be the best way. I got to be honest. So uh, just take your time, do this the right way, and uh, you'll be well rewarded. So. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to pause the video.